folks, Yishai Fleischer here, JewishPress.com. I'm in Kibbutz Ktura, 50 kilometers north of Eilat. Behind me, a beautiful solar power grid. It's commercial and it's plugged into the Israel Electric Company. It's selling electricity. And it's powered by Arava Power. The place is called Kibbutz Ktura. And I'm going to learn all about it and hopefully together we'll see how the Jewish people are going to be the renewable light to the nations. Yosef Abramowitz is the president of Arava Power. Right now as I'm standing here in the sun, I'm feeling the power. It's hot. It's hot. And it is free. I'm not paying for this energy that's hitting my face hard. Behind me are beautiful solar arrays. I mean, I say beautiful, you could tell that they are crafted machines that, that just are, are here to do what they're supposed to do. On the land of Israel, here in the land where the Jewish people walked, Yosef Abramowitz, tell me a little bit about what I'm seeing. So this is Israel's first commercial solar field. It's the beginning of the revolution. It's happening. Actually, it's, it's holy land, although we're outside of the uh, Shemitah area of uh, the ancient land. But this is the pathway that the uh, Israelites walked, Vechanu Veyotvatah. Uh, right over here. Obviously, it's pretty impressive, and and I see that uh, what what people don't see is this. This is actually the first solar power farm array uh, in the Middle East, and really, there's only one other one that that is even anything to speak of, and it's all the way out in Dubai. It's uh, it's in Abu Dhabi. Uh, oh, in Abu Dhabi. It's uh, yeah, about nine hundred. Yeah, yonder. It's a beautiful field, not as beautiful as this one, uh, and it's ten megawatts. Um, and uh, what I'm proud to say is that. Past those palm trees, we're about to prepare to build a 40 megawatt, which will be one of the world's largest solar fields. 40 megawatts, that is a lot of energy. I mean, give me some kind of a way to understand what 40 megawatts is as compared to, for example, the city of Eilat, the biggest city close by. So Eilat uses about 120 megawatts at peak, meaning air conditioners are on in every house and in every hotel. This will supply a third of Eilat's peak energy needs, which means they won't ever have to fire up the diesel and jet fuel mazout generators that they have on almost all the time to make up for the energy deficit. There's another side to the energy problem here in the Middle East, and that is uh, the modern terrorism that Israel faces. And we know that the uh, pipeline mm -hmm. of natural gas that was coming from Egypt has been bombed 12 times in the last year. Is that right? So the, the, there, are two, there are several national security issues. One is, yeah, the, the cheap gas that has come from Egypt is, is compromised. And uh, Israel had been banking on uh, cheap natural gas, and you just can't depend on it. Uh, so there's no, there's no energy independence when you're relying on someone else's energy source. The second is that the, uh, Hamas has grad missiles from Iran, medium-range missiles that can hit the power plant in Ashkelon, where we're supposedly building another major fossil-burning power plant in the next couple of years. Why would you put a target right next to Gaza what we say is not only is it good for the environment, a distributed power model like what we have here, solar fields all over the state of Israel, is really the best defense against enemies with missiles. You should really know there's a kibbutz behind it, there's a company behind it, um, there's a chairman at Hofland who's an Ole from uh, Holland, there's a vice chairman from New York, David Rosenblatt, and there's a phenomenal uh, professional team. We, we have a vision that is larger than one field at Kibbutz Keturah. The, the whole idea is that we, we could be a renewable light unto all the nations. We can take the first major economy in the world that is operating currently on, on fossil fuels and transform it to be a solar-based economy. And if we do that, we're a little country, we can do it, then we'll really be a pilot for the rest of the world. How do you make that transformation? And uh, so we're doing that. Yosef Abramowitz, I was uh, flying down here to a, a lot, and uh, I was looking out the window the whole time. I was B-tired, but I kept looking out the window. It's beautiful, huh? It's very beautiful, and you know what it's full of? It's full of desert. <laughs> it's, uh, it is. So, uh, look, 80% of this desert is, is firing zones for the IDF to keep us safe. 20% is nature reserves. So there's not, it, it looks like there's a lot of land. But even with the firing zones and even with the nature reserves, there's more than enough land to be able to supply 30, 40, 50 percent of Israel's energy needs before we have to get creative. Now, this is Einstein, actually. Einstein was the first to figure out that light is not just a wave, but it's also a particle. Now, those particles are called photons, and they come, they come in here, and when they hit, they go into the subatomic level of the atom of the silicon. Now, the atom is like the solar system. You have the, you have the sun in the middle, 
and the, uh, the electrons are running around like crazy, a photon comes from outer space, it comes from outer space, and it goes right into, right into the, the atom itself, and it pushes out, it excites an electron and, and displaces it. And so that's happening now gazillions of times as we're speaking. And a stream of electrons that are getting pushed out is called electricity. Is this cheap? Is this, is this you know, I, I, I hate to be like, you know, I'm not the money guy, uh -huh. but I, I, I hate to ask, but is this, uh, uh, is this, is there a return on investment here? I'm not the money guy either, but uh, this is what's needed. And there's a phenomenal return on investment. So uh, you can see there's no meter clacking uh, and, and charging us for the sun. The fuel is free. Uh, according to the scientists, we have about another 5 billion years of sunlight. After that, I can't, uh, it doesn't work with my economic. But what about the technology? Right. So the technology is bankable and it lasts for at least 20 years. And if it doesn't last for 20 years, they have to replace it. The return on investment, it's a, th this whole field costs about 100 million shekels, about $27 million. We're about to pour hopefully about a billion and a half dollars into the rest of our pipeline over the next two, three years. And high capital expenditure, free fuel. And so basically the electric company has to buy for 20 years the, f the electricity that we produce. And if we win that contract, essentially that license, then it's a phenomenal economic model. There are 18,600 panels. The panels make DC electricity at 24 volts. There are three of them. They're very noisy. The uh, converters take the 24 volts converted into 300 volt AC, and then there's a transformer on the other side of the room, one for every megawatt that creates the, uh, 33,000 volts AC, which is what is sold to the electric company. Yosef, what is that thing on the gate to your uh, solar farm. This home, we want it to be uh, protected uh, by more than just the infrared security cameras. So your mezuzah here has two aspects. One, it has inside the parchment scroll uh, with the ancient wor words of God's blessing and protection. Yeah. And, and then it's got another uh, aspect to it. What is that on the top part of your mezuzah? So look, we're supposed to put it al Sharecha on your gates. And this is the gate to the historic solar field. And this is a, a, a sundial. It's a, it, uh, it, it, the, the shadow moves and uh, it helps uh, tell time. We're, we're not the creators of time. This, it comes from above. It says here um, in Arabic and in Farsi, you are standing at the birthplace of the Arava Power Company. You may be wondering why, in addition to the English and Hebrew, on the other side we have it in Arabic and especially in Farsi. And that's because it's our belief here that solar power is the power of peace, but nuclear power is the power of war. And we wanted the Iranians to know that as well. Solar energy, it's the way of the future, and it's the way that Israel is helping this region get a little bit healthier, a little bit better, and catch some of that natural resource that we're already getting, making it more useful, renewable, green, and Jewish. Solar energy, it's the future.